Pet the Petros Review. In this episode, we take a look at the film Planes. Now, in this episode of the Petros Review, and welcome back. I'm Elias Sipka, and, welcome, and the Petros Review is where I review many of the 1200 DVDs of Video Games Island. As I'm taking this episode on Halloween of 2019, so, it's, so I'm doing a horror film with this episode. This is actually the 14th episode I've done this series so far. Anyway. Hyenas was directed by Eric Weston in the year 2011, and it's got a bit of a reputation as being one of the worst films of the 2010s. And it was released in Australia has you know, under the, the Peacock Films rental range. Now, this was a laughably terrible direct-to-video B movie that came out at the start of the 2010s, has been considered a turkey by practically everyone who's ever seen it. I found the film to be so bad it was so awesome to take in, although the only entertainment value is in making smiles quips when you're watching it. Hyenas is in all respects a werewolf movie, but writer-director Eric Weston, who built up a modest cult reputation from the 1980s with his only other horror film, The Ridiculous Evil Speak, where a bully teenager uses a possessed computer to build up black magic powers to take revenge on the bullies that tormented him, resulting in an awesome display of gore effects, but it was otherwise constructed very badly. Seems like I've had a brainwave. Why not make something entirely original to justify making an ultra-cheap horror film? So he came up with the idea of making the werewolves of the beast not actually wolves, but a whole new type of crypto-humans, <laughs> with polymorphic creatures that look human during the day, but are actually hyenas. In terms of cre creativity, I give this film full marks. The film opens with a mother and infant baby being pulled over to the side of the road due to a flat tire, and then attacked by mysterious creatures that kill and eat her and her baby. The distraught husband, financial executive Gannon, played by Constance Mandalore, you know, who was busy doing this all franchise at the time as well, is then recruited by the local town's nut job, Crazy Briggs, Meshach Taylor, in his last film role before he died a few years later, who informs him that the killer is not human but a race of crypto humans that resemble humans but are a form of lycanthrope that takes the form of hyenas and can change at will. Two years have passed and Ganon has become an expert hunter. After saving a potential victim of the hyenas, a young woman named Valerie, Ganon and Valerie fall in love, while the hyenas, who are in the midst of a power struggle, decide to end the threat once and for all. At the same time, two rival street gangs in a small town wind up in a turf war after members of one gang refuse alcohol due to their young age, and their rivalry ends up being connected to the hyenas. But despite the undeniable ingenuity of the premise, the film is otherwise completely, hysterically awful. The dialogue is atrocious, has a sum of the acting. Christina Campbell, a film producer who also did some acting roles up on the side, goes through the film with a ridiculous southern accent that is hilarious to listen to. Lead actor Costas Mendelor, who has made a name for himself by starring in the majority of the Soul franchise, had somehow trashed his reputation in the same manner as Ben Kingsley did by starring in post-millennial horror trash with the likes of Dr. Chopper and this one. Like I said, Mishash Taylor, in his last film world of three years before he died, plays the part of the old hand. It's my turn for the token expert in any horror film who has the knowledge to defeat the monster and usually ends up getting killed right after giving the hero the training and knowledge necessary to defeat the monster. He goes with a valiant effort to get to grips with the hysterically bad dialogue. The film also starts some, does some weird time jumps. The film starts off with Mandalore being recruited by Briggs to hunt the hyenas and suddenly jumps forward a couple of years without any signposting, which results in some viewers getting disoriented pretty quickly, unless they pay close attention to the story. The film's one ace in the hole is the admittedly well thought out mythology of the hyena creatures. Weston has clearly done his research on the subject and laid out the rules of a competence that if any much better director were to take the idea and make their own film out of it, they would benefit from it. The hyenas follow their animal counterparts very closely. They are a matriarchal race, which with the clan led by an alpha female, the males kept the low status. In fact, some of the male hyenas are getting pretty fed up with their low status and briefly plot to correct the imbalance before being given a verbal dressing down from the new alpha hopeful. They travel in packs, and are not afflicted humans but actual hyena human hybrids that can change their form at will. While most viewers would find the Western's approach of having the female hyenas completely removing their clothing before transforming but keeping their modesty by digitally blurring out their nipples and genitals, some fans might consider that an insulting attempt to have it both ways on the front. 
But if you actually done the research on hyenas, discovering what that female hyenas actually have a strange clitoris that is the size and relative shape of the male hyena's penis, and which also acts pretty much the same way as a penis, not to mention having to pass babies through during birth, I find this approach to nudity very interesting, not to mention the really hilarious. If the female hyenas in the film are really like the animal counterparts, they should be women walking around with, you know what, between their legs. Once you know that fact, the nudity will be proved to be hysterically funny. Although in the climax, it's it's actually one of the hyenas seem fully nude, but no, no gentleness behind. <laughs> Eric Weston might have created one of the minor video nasties in the 1980s with Evil Speak, but he seriously has no business making horror films, unless you want to see a seriously bad and downright hilarious bargain basement horror trash fest with some of the worst CGI effects to greatest early 2010s horror, and something that will offend and repulse those who don't like incompetent filmmaking. But those who love watching awful films will get a serious kick out of this one. If you're the latter type of viewer, you'll be laughing like a hanging with this one but that doesn't mask the fact that this is an entirely terrible El Cheapo horror flick. I give this a D-, minus, which is a 1 out of 10, which a rating I give to terrible films. But there are several killings but no gore scene. I mean, some various like gore scene very early on. Now, as for the nudity, Amanda Ardsma and Christina Campbell both get naked, but with only the, the nipples and genitals either obscured by the camera angles or visually blurred out to keep the modesty and also to keep to what is actually biological traits of real-life female hyenas. I can mention before, this leads to a rather ridiculous, hilarious plot hole in the film. Like I said, if these women were actually human hyena hybrids, then they should have their own strange lady John Thomas style sexual appendages, as it stands very funny nudity. And that's for the film. Now, like I mentioned, this was released on a rental-only DVD by Peacock Films, which released quite a few, many B-grade uh, films, for the rental market. Since the rental market collapsed, Peacock Films has not been seen again. And to flashback entertainment, the bargain basement level label actually acquired the entire catalog. I have a, had a couple of films that uh, copies of the same film with Peacock and flashback copies. Now, I'll review some of them in the future. Anyway, that's it for this night. Hyenas and Happy Halloween.